Hello everybody, my name is Chris Brady, author of the Boeing 737 Tech Site and the Boeing 737 Tech Guide. This video is about the 737 mid-cabin exit doors, uh, specifically the plug option. Um, so it's a follow-up to yesterday's video where I, I spoke about the mid-exit doors and uh, what we're going to cover on this one, uh, it's only a short video, um, quick intro, um, details specifically about the plug option and the construction of the, the plug option and about securing the door because obviously that's a, a, a hot topic of, uh, of interest at the moment in the, uh, the wake of um, Alaska Airlines Flight 1282. Um, on the uh, on the fifth of January, and finally a little bit about the, um, the the fallout from said incident. As always, please treat your company training and their manuals as the authoritative source of information. So, um, I say, following on from yesterday's video, which was about the the mid cabin uh, emergency exit doors in general, and what we're looking at specifically here is the the plug option and its locking mechanism. Uh, for further details about uh, mid-cabin emergency exit doors in general, flight locks, the PSEU and other indications, see yesterday's video for that. So um, very quick recap on what the plug option is. Um, there are eight different options for all the mid-exit doors on the MAX fleet. Not all the options are available for each variant and the different options are chosen by the airline when the aircraft is ordered based upon the anticipated maximum number of seats when the aircraft enters service. So, you you, you know, based on how, you, how dense you're, you're going to um, have the seating arrangement inside, the, there will be an option here which, which suits you, which, which fine-tunes it for that. Um, as I say, this video is just going to focus on the plug option, which is only available for the MAX 9. So, this is not applicable for the MAX 8, 8-200, uh, 7, 10, any of them just the nine. Uh, what it does is it limits the maximum passenger capacity to 189 down from um, a potential well 230 uh, which of course you could only have with the, with the max 10 with the with the type C option. The door structure is modified so the side wall doesn't infringe the interior and a row of standard seats can be installed. Uh, full size window is also installed. Uh, Boeing do warn that future activation of the, the mid-cabin emergency exit doors will involve significant cost. They therefore ask operators to consider retaining the baseline configuration with the deactivated mid-cabin exit doors if future activation of the, of the door is anticipated. Nevertheless, it remains a common option. The, the door plug option is the only option which has a full-size passenger window so it's easy to spot internally and externally. All other options either have a standard door porthole or no window at all if they've gone for the deactivated option. Notice that the, the door when plugged doesn't have the external handle or pressure relief door because it's not designed to open uh, or at least not in service anyway. It's designed to open for maintenance purposes only. Right, on to the construction. Now, um, as I say, although the, the, the plug option is not designed to open in service, it can be opened for, for maintenance, for, for routine inspection. Um, so the the doors, as it shows in this photo here, they, they hinge, uh, they open outwards and hinge downwards. So um, it's it's quite unlike the, the, the other four doors, one and two left and right, which are oversized ones. These don't need gates at the top and bottom to reduce their size. Um, they are still considered plug type. Um, and the, just a word on terminology, a, a, a plug type door or window means something that's that's usually thicker on the inside than the outside, to, 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 so it's, it can't pass through the aperture as is. Um, not to be confused with the, with the plug option, although that's where the name comes from. These are not oversized doors, but they must move um, downwards to clear the stop fittings before they can fold down. So, looking at the structure of it, um, this is an inside view of the plug option mid-exit door stripped down while in maintenance. 
and you can see it's got a full size window there's no vent door slide or opening mechanism with this uh, what what goes on to that is is basically just insulation and then the sidewall interior of the aircraft what you can see in this photo uh, if you look carefully are 12 stop fittings and stop pads around the door there are six on each side none across the top or bottom these take the pressurization loads from the door plug and transmit them through to the door frame which is which is much stronger there is also uh, two strap assemblies one at the top left and one at the top right there they're there simply to hold the door in the partially open position about 15 degrees open uh, during maintenance What you can also see at the, uh, at, at the bottom there are two large hinges and uh, bonding straps uh, at, at the bottom. Excuse the typo in the text there. Um, now, on ab well above the hinges, um, there are lift assist springs. Uh, and these lift the door plug about an inch and a half or four centimeters. Um, and the lift assist spring makes sure that the door will not fall back to the uh, the closed position um, if opened. Obviously that would be hugely undesirable if there was um, an evacuation in progress. Now near the top of the door on each side there's a guide track um, and a corresponding roller pin on the door frame. Now this is just the same as you got on all the other doors in the aircraft, both passenger doors and um, the cargo doors as well have, have, have got these. When the door closes, the roller pin, which is the, the, the r circular object as you can see uh, on, on the diagram, it goes into the track sort of turns a corner and then sits at the top of the track and that holds the door closed. To open the door plug a downward force is is, is needed on the on the, the the plug door to force it down against the lift assist springs until the the rollers clear the guide tracks and that's where this inch and a half comes from because that's the approximate length of that guide track. Right, so that's how the door works. Let's have a look at how it um, should be secured. So, because the plug option door is never designed to be open in service, uh, only as I say for, for maintenance in inspection, the, 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 the plug door is, is attached in the closed position, attached to the fuselage in the closed position by four bolts. And you can see them indicated on the on the photo there. So there are there are two, what one in each of the upper guide track fittings, um, and two again, one each through each of the lower hinge bracket assemblies. And these bolts between them stop the door moving vertically, which are the bottom ones in the in the hinge brackets, and outwards, which are the upper ones in the guide fittings. So the guide track locking bolts, they go through the guide track holding the roller pin in position as you can see from the, 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 the bottom diagram there. So the upper di diagram is as before, that shows the roller pin and how it enters the guide track when it's at the top, then the locking bolt is put through. I've got a, uh, a photograph of this and thank you very much to the engineer that, um, that sent me this overnight. Um, so you can see in in the photo the uh, the the roller guide starting from the top and working down. The roller guide is is obviously hidden from view here because it's inside the the guide track fitting. Next down, you can see the uh, the locking bolt in place, and it's secured with a with a nut and a locking wire which which is bent through uh, 180 degrees round the end of the nut around the end of the bolt sorry um, and then obviously the, the the guide track fitting itself so that that um, fit as I say it's a curved track for the roller pin on the frame to go into when the doors close bolts are inserted through the guide fitting to lock the roller pins in the closed position and uh, and there's a pin there to prevent them from from working loose and escaping at the bottom of the door you've got two vertical movement arrestor bolts on the hinges 
at the uh, at, at at the bottom of the of these door plugs. And as the name suggests, these bolts prevent the door from moving upwards so that it can't get over the uh, the lip and open. So if you if you look across at the photo now, what 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 you can see is the um, well the hinge the whole thing's kind of the hinge what what one of the hinges but if you see the uh the black cylindrical object coming up toward the center top of the photo that is what uh the the hinge guide fitting which is that green and cream color is just below that that's what that moves on that that gives it the movement um and that movement comes from the lift assist spring which is below the um the the, the guide fitting so if this wasn't bolted in place the spring would push that um that that guide fitting up that that black cylindrical shaft moving the uh the door sort of upwards and outwards stopping it falling back uh into the closed position now in the center of the the guide fitting there you can see there's a there's a bolt through it similar to the well identical as far as i know to to the other one i showed you in the previous photo uh which is called a vertical movement arrestor bolt does what it says on the tin. The bolt goes all the way through the the, the guide fitting and the um, and and the hinge. Um, the, there's there's a there's a nut on it and um, a wire lock as well. So on to uh, Alaska Airlines twelve eighty two and and what happened there. So on the fifth of Jan, twenty twenty four. Uh, Alaska Airlines 737 a Max 9 because that's the only one with this option was climbing through approximately 16,000 feet when the the left mid exit door detached in flight so fortunately there were no passengers in the two seats next to the door plug um, which you know extremely fortuitous the aircraft obviously depressurized the crew stopped the climb and returned back to Portland Oregon there is video footage available out there on social media which shows the cabin uh, remarkably calm given the, the nature of the event. None of the 171 passengers or six crew were injured, thank goodness. What you can see in this photo are uh, the stop pads and roller pins. Um, now certainly the ones you can see where, where the where the seats aren't in the way all appear to be intact and you know fairly undamaged um, that is obviously something for the uh, for the NTSB to look further at but that's certainly what I can see from this and there's no apparent damage to the uh, to the inside frame um, I mean obviously the, um, the, the 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 sidewall panel is is missing I'm not quite sure where that ended up either inside or outside the aircraft um, and you can see the insulation um, but you know it, it looks like it's been fairly cleanly removed from the outside of the aircraft uh, you can see the door plugs completely detached so uh, you know came off the um, the, the, the lower hinge mountings um, those hinges are visible you, you can see those black cylindrical shafts that we, we, we spoke about that the that the springs push the, those collars up um, fortunately no apparent secondary damage was was done to the fuselage I mean you know if, if, if it had been attached to those it, it could have really you know ripped the fuselage skin or door frame or whatever but it appears to have come clean off and almost like those two collars just slid straight off the uh, off the hinges um, photos of this aircraft taken before the incident show that it has got a normal sized passenger window in the mid exit doors therefore we know it's got the plug option and the aircraft serial number and, and idea are given there the the point is the aircraft was um, was was delivered in the end of October. I think it might have been the thirty first of October, twenty twenty three, from memory. So the aircraft was just a shade over two months old. Okay, um, fallout from this this incident. 
within 24 hours, the FAA had issued an emergency AD uh, worthiness directive uh, requiring all 737 MAX 9s with the plug option to be inspected before further flight. Um, and the quote from that is that this AD prohibits further flight of all affected airplanes until the airplane is inspected and all applicable corrective actions have been performed using a method approved by manager blah blah blah. Um, it doesn't actually specify in the AD what those applicable corrective actions are. Um, it's just said, you know, check with them to find out what you need to do. The AD is also op uh, adopted by EASA and all of the other regulatory authorities around the world will no doubt follow suit. Needless to say, the NTSB is investigating the event. Um, there are unconfirmed reports in the media that this aircraft had a history of pressurisation events in the days before the event. Um, I have no knowledge of whether that's true or not, but if true, it could point to a problem with the door. I mean, it could be something else, or it could be this, uh, you know, a leak in this door. Inevitably, with the aircraft being just two months old, questions will be asked about the installation of those four locking bolts. Um, from what I understand, these doors are uh, installed um, by Spirit um, down in Wichita. They're, they're, they're then transported up to, to Seattle. Um, I don't know if the doors are subsequently removed in Seattle before the aircraft goes into service. I <laughs> I suspect they might be, but I really don't know. Um, so we don't know where where the where these locking bolts were were, were put in, um, or at least I don't. The NTSB and, um, and 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 Boeing will 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 certainly know. But anywho, the, uh, what I guess my point is that there are a lot of unknown facts here, and as always, until the facts are known and the report is issued, all of this remains speculation. And of course, as with any safety investigation, the purpose is not to apportion blame. It is to find out what happened um, so that a, uh, a repeat event does not occur. That's it for this. Uh, just a quick video update for you. That's all it was. As always, if you like this video, if you found it useful, please subscribe to, uh, to my channel. Thank you.